Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So on today's video, I am going to speak about three fundamentally sound stocks. I will also show you live investing in these stocks. These are some of Saurabh Mukherjee's stocks. So I will comment upon the stock prices as well, whether these are overpriced, underpriced, and what is my understanding about these stocks. But before that, let me give you two, three disclaimers. Number one, this is not an investment advice. Please do your own analysis and reach your own conclusion. For example, some of the stocks that I will be talking about today, these have been on my radar for a quite a long time. But I have not taken positions in these earlier. I am building my positions more and more now. Why? Because the markets have fallen. So similarly, if you feel that the price is reasonable for these stocks, then you could consider building positions too. Number two point, I have purchased more stocks. So it's not as if that these are the five stocks only that I have purchased. I have purchased even more stocks. But the problem is right now the market is very volatile. So I'm avoiding talking about risky investment options. But if you have watched my videos consistently, you will understand which stocks am I talking about. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let us start discussing five stocks and let me also give you my investment thesis. So my investment thesis is that number one, the markets are going to recover. There is absolutely no reason why the market should not recover within the next one year. That is my hypothesis approximation. Can I be wrong? Of course, I can be wrong. But I believe that the markets will be hitting an all time high within a one year time. Why do I say it? Multiple reasons for it. But let me show you one important data point here about FII buying and selling. So this is the month wise data for FII selling and please start looking at it from December onwards to here. And what you will see is that the number had been generally going up. For example, in December of 2021, they sold approximately 35. Then by April, they sold approximately 40,000 crore. Then they ended up selling approximately 59,000 crore by June of 2022. So this number was generally going up. Now what has happened this month is, then again, here is the data for you. You can clearly see that this month, FII selling has been restrained to a very large extent, which is under 10,000 crore. And if you aggregate FII and DII buying and selling data, then net net big investors are buying the market as of now. So this is one of the signs of market bottoming out. Now let me show you one more important quantitative data point that I have spoken about earlier on one of my videos, but I will repeat it because this is a very important point. So you can see from the Nifty 50 chart that the market took support and this is the support and consolidation zone that this support happened approximately one year back. And since then, the markets have been very volatile. They have gone up, down, this, that. And now they took support here and then they bounced back. This was a V-shaped recovery. This again is a sign of market bottoming out. So what do I essentially mean? When I say markets are bottoming out, in very easy to understand language, it means that right now, this particular level of support here, this seems like a very, very strong support, which is unlikely to get broken. Will it absolutely not go down below this? No one can definitely say that for sure. But this is a very, very strong support zone and the markets are unlikely to fall below this, at least in the short term. So with that viewpoint in mind, let me speak about the second most important investment thesis that I have as of now is that number one, the small cap and mid caps are going to recover the most from this point. Second key thing, the banks or financial sector is going to give a breakout from this point. Why am I saying this? Let me show you some data again. So let me compare the fall in Nifty from its top. So you can see that this fall right now stands at roughly 10% correction. So Nifty 50 has corrected by roughly 10%. Now let us start comparing this data to Nifty small cap. So this is the Nifty small cap data and you can categorically see that Nifty small cap 100 has corrected by roughly 24% while the nifty 50 has corrected by 10 percent so what does that mean that the nifty small cap has corrected more and in a falling market nifty of course will correct more but right now that gap is huge so my hypothesis is that if the market start running then small cap and mid cap are likely to give better breakouts now again let's do the same analysis for nifty bank so here you can categorically see that nifty bank has fallen by roughly 12 percent while nifty overall has fallen by 10 percent so which again means that banks are undervalued so with this investment thesis out of the way let me start speaking about five stocks and also a very big shout out to our sponsors for today which is small case now in case you don't want to go and pick individual stocks you could consider investing via small caps by undertaking some thematic investments especially in blue chip companies and i'm linking two of my favorite small cases in the description box. This is especially a great option if you're scared about the market, you don't want to undertake that volatility, then it is better to let professional managers handle your money. So right now, definitely learn about stock investing and when your skills go up, then start investing directly in equities. But if you are a beginner or an intermediate level player in the stock market, please go via small cases. It's a great option. So the first stock that I have purchased is HDFC Bank. In fact, I already had a big position in HDFC Bank. I have further built my position in HDFC Bank and I would continue 
continue to do it. Why? There are multiple reasons. One is that if the bank Nifty starts to run up, then HDFC Bank has a very decent weight on bank Nifty. And as a result, HDFC Bank will also have to move. So this is point one, very easy to understand. Number two, I feel that HDFC Bank is deeply undervalued at this point in time. Now, why do I say it? So let me compare HDFC Bank with ICICI Bank and SBI. So let me take you through some data. So from this graphic, you can categorically see that HDFC Bank is trading at roughly 19% discount from its peak. This is the recent high that HDFC Bank has made. Now let us compare the same data to ICICI Bank. So this is the graphic for ICICI Bank and you can categorically see that from its peak, ICICI Bank is trading at only a 7% discount. So which is not very high, especially when you compare it to HDFC Bank. So your obvious response here would be that, you know what, ICICI Bank might be doing something exceptionally good or HDFC Bank might be doing something really bad. So therefore, HDFC prices are going down, but ICICI Bank's prices are not going down that much, relatively speaking. So let us do a very quick number comparison. So from the absolute bank size, I think HDFC Bank and ICICI Bank are comparable companies. It's not as if that it is like Kotec Mahindra Bank. So Kotec Mahindra Bank is fairly a smaller company. So of course, it can grow at a very brisk pace compared to HDFC or ICICI Bank. But when we are comparing HDFC and ICICI Bank, they are somewhat similar and comparable banks. So with that said, let us quickly take a look at the PE ratio for both the banks. So you can see that HDFC Bank is at a PE of 19.48. And ICICI Bank's PE is 19.82. Then the natural question comes that why is it that ICICI Bank has given a run up but HDFC has not. That is because of the fact that ICICI Bank had been dealing with a series of problems from 2015 to approximately 2018 onwards and its stock price tanked a lot. So it is now catching up so to say to its baseline. So that does not mean that ICICI Bank is better than HDFC Bank, nothing of that sort. In very easy to understand language, ICICI Bank is a momentum play. So the positive momentum is there. Therefore, its stock price did not fall that much because it was catching on to the momentum that it had built in the last two, three years. So I hope that analysis is clear that HDFC Bank, there is no fundamental problem. Its revenue numbers are solid. Its profit numbers are solid. Its PE is at a decent level and it is underperforming the Nifty. Now let us quickly compare HDFC Bank with SBI. In case you haven't watched my case study on SBI, please go and watch it. It will help you understand more about the loan giving structure of banks. This is a very important point simply because of the fact that HDFC Bank, according to me, is a very clean bank. It does not give out shady loans. It is not doing any kind of malpractices. Now, can something go off in HDFC Bank at some point in time in the future? Of course, it can. But net-net, it is a very clean bank. So there seems to be no fundamental problem in terms of loan giving and loan recovery. But when it comes to PSU banks, which are almost trading at a very high level, then you need to be careful. So in that context, let me take you to SBI's chart. So SBI right now is trading at approximately here. So you can see that it is almost at its all time high and it is consolidating here. Now, if it does not go up or gives a breakout, then it is very likely that it might come down. So the risk reward equation for SBI is not that sensible compared to the risk reward equation that exists for HDFC bank. Now, sometime in the future, some NPA problem will come up or some government regulation will change or some big business group might default on loans and those type of situations and news articles will hit something like SBI. So if you're a long term investor in SBI, please double check your analysis and look more deeply into it. So one final reason why I'm purchasing HDFC bank more is because there are a lot of Faltuki Khabrein that are now coming out. For example, take a look at this news that you know what, private banks are having a hard time in terms of retaining their staff, this, that. Okay, in a country like India, if one job comes out, there are 500 people who apply for that job. So in India, a bank like HDFC, ICICI or even SBI, they will not struggle to recruit candidates. So that is not going to happen. And these type of khabre are coming up. It is very evident that there is no more negative news left to be doled out in terms of bringing down the stock prices of these stocks. Now, again, I'm not trying to indicate that the stock price cannot fall it very well can but at least the legitimate reasons have been absorbed quite extensively into the stock price already so now comes the second stock which is starson so let me give you a little bit of background about the company that it is a labware equipment manufacturing company so they do what they make like test tubes they make petri dishes they make different lab testing equipments which are used extensively by pharma company it is one of the top three companies when it comes to this niche industry and they own approximately 12 percent of the market share but this is a small company as of now. In fact, it IPO'd last year. And if you look at the company's performance, it has been nothing short of phenomenal. So let me run you through some numbers. So you can categorically see that the sales have been going up. 
more importantly the profits have been going up and the profit margins have improved quite considerably this is the best part about this entire business that they are trying to run profitably second key point is that the price discovery of this stock has been completed so what do i mean by price discovery let me take you to tarson's chart and show you the price history of the stock so you can see that it ipo'd last year and the stock price was at 818 and unfortunately the stock price fell because the entire market started to get crushed from november onwards last year so probably a really bad time to ipo but after dancing around for the last several months so the stock price is back to almost where it started so this has given us roughly 6 7 months to do the price discovery because whenever an ipo is launched we as retail investors have very little information what the correct price of that particular company is so let the markets decide the price watch the price movement for a little bit and then finally take your position so right now i feel that enough time has passed for us to actually reasonably put our finger that okay you know what this zone of 750 to 850 is where the tarsons actual price should be as per the current fundamentals and that is where the stock price is currently trading now what you will see is that the debt on this company is quite low it is close to 4% of equity which is a very low figure that's point 1 and given the fact that this is in the manufacturing space this is a good debt level to have this is one second and most important thing is that this company wants to go debt free they are deliberately trying very very hard to accomplish that how do i know so take a look at this snippet and one of the goals for launching their ipo was to reduce their debt and that is precisely what they have been able to do which is a great step because if a company goes debt free it simply means that during a growth phase it can take on more debt and grow quite aggressively so that gives them more leeway second is that if the bad phase of the economy continues this company is likely to survive long longer why because they don't have debt they don't have unnecessary obligation they don't have unnecessary infrastructure on which they will have to keep on pouring money after money in form of interest payments so all this theory is further validated if you look at the investor holding of the company so you can categorically see that promoters have not cut down their holding at all FIIs have not cut down their holding at all and DIIs have actually increased their holding in this company. Now the best part about this company that this is a small cap company. Now I showed you at the start of the video that right now small caps are deeply undervalued. So whenever the market start running there is a very very high likelihood that something like Tarsons is going to give a massive run up from this point. Now does that mean that you should go sell everything and invest in Tarsons no this is not an investment advice please do your own due diligence and take positions accordingly let's move on to the third stock which is Bajaj Finance so in the past also i have spoken quite aggressively about Bajaj Finance why do i feel that it is a very good stock now let me take you through three four salient points about the stock so first and foremost let us quickly check the price levels of the stock as to how much it is trading below from its top So you can clearly see that the stock used to trade at approximately 8000 and right now it is trading at roughly 6200 so this is a 25% discount on the stock so to say from its peak so there is enough margin of safety this is point 1 Number 2 if you check the fundamentals of the stock and let me run you through some numbers you can categorically see that there is no problem in terms of revenues or profit making of the company point number 3 or the most critical point about a bajaj finance type of company is the business model of the company now what does bajaj finance do so it is india's number 1 nbfc as of now now what is the most critical problem with nbfc business the most critical problem with nbfc business is the risk management framework that if nbfcs are giving out risky loans or if the loans that they are giving they are unable to recover it very similar to how it happens at public sector banks then this model falls apart so we should be considerate and cognizant about the fact whether bajaj finance is lending sensibly or not or is their quality of loan deteriorating with time so this is the rating that was issued by crisel and i will link the paper in the description box you can go and check it out so please go through this paper this talks about the risks and opportunities with this particular stock and how crisel is rating its asset quality so let me pull out some critical information from this piece and i would urge you to go and read this holistically so its long term debt rating has been assigned as triple a which is a very strong rating given the indian market its short term rating has also been given an a plus level which is again a very strong rating so to say as per the indian market so there has been no problem in terms of the overall asset quality of the company but what are the prominent risks associated with the company let me quickly take you through that paragraph so if you take a look at its gross non performing asset it used to be 1.73% as of december 2021 so these numbers are for march 2021 and december 2021 and what you will observe is that in march 2021 its gross npa was at 1.79% and it has come down 
at 1.73%. So there has not been a massive improvement in the gross NPA overall, but the overall number 1.79, it is not too high to begin with, but this is a definite weakness that the numbers are not coming down, so to say. The second key point is that the total write-off in 2021 was approximately 5,500 crores. Right now in 2022, for the first nine months, they have taken the write-off as roughly 4,000 crores. So this is for nine months. So if you extrapolate it, again, it will come out to be roughly 5,000. So again, not a massive improvement when it comes to write-off off also. So yes, some of their loans are going bad, no doubt about that. But overall, the business looks quite sound. Similarly, you can read more about their provisioning requirements. I have a link to the paper in the description box. You can go through it and understand each point that is written there. Now, let me talk about my investment thesis in Bajaj Finance very, very quickly by showing you three, four snippets. So first and foremost, these numbers come from the latest filings of Bajaj Finance. So overall, on year to year basis, their profits have grown. Now, why? Because last year was really tough. In fact, the last couple of years have been very tough. So their latest results are going to do well. So nothing to celebrate here, but we can definitely affirm the fact that the company is not going through any type of lending crisis or recovering the loan crisis because they are still very much profitable and their profits are growing. The second key point, and this is the most important point, is that they have a very clear growth plan. For example, they are undertaking a digital transformation of the business. More importantly, they are going to ramp up their credit card service area. Now, this is a very important point because right now, Bajaj Finance and Bajaj FinServe are into EMI-based cards. These are not typically credit cards. They are all in one type of cards, which might or might not be categorized into credit card. But going forward, Bajaj Finance is issuing credit cards as one of the major prominent business lines which can grow and generate a lot of money for them. Now, this needs to be seen in context of the fact that Bajaj Finance is one of the biggest lenders when it comes to NBFC space. They have a big customer base and they can definitely eat into the market share of prominent companies if it starts focusing a lot on its credit card business. This is also supported by the fact that recently you might have read the news that RBI is not giving a banking license to Paytm. It is crushing a lot of fintech companies. Fintech companies are unable to raise the next round of funding. A lot of bad, bad stuff is happening with these BNPL cards, fintech companies, etc. Why? Because they were propagating, taking risky loans in the economy. But Bajaj Finance is a responsible lender, so to say, or at least their history tells us that they are a responsible lender. So going forward, if they get into the credit card business, so number one, they should be able to cross sell it to their own existing customer base and they should be able to apply the same risk mitigation principles that they are currently applying to their other lines of businesses. So even this line of business is likely to be very profit generating for a company like Bajaj Finance. So just a very quick note, if you see the credit card market here, you can check the share of different different banks in the credit card market. Now you tell me if Bajaj Finance gets into the credit card market and aggressively grows that vertical, which banks are going to suffer the most in the credit card space? I would love to read your commentary, so do comment in the comment box. So now let me talk about technicals of Bajaj Finance and what you will see is that from its stock, the stock has fallen by roughly 22% and the last consolidation happened somewhere here. So this becomes a very important zone for the stock and it has re-entered this zone. So if it gives a breakout here, then there is a very high likelihood that it will give a very sharp up move here. Now, why am I saying this? Because this is a major trading zone for Bajaj Finance that it took support multiple times on this particular line. So an immediate up move that I see from here is roughly an 8 to 9% up move, which is a very strong gain, at least in the short term. Now, will this 100% happen? I don't know. A lot depends on market circumstances. But net net, looking at the numbers, looking at the growth story, even if you want to hold it for another year, year and a half, there is no reason why Bajaj Finance stock should keep on falling. Fundamentals at least indicate that this is a very strong stock. So I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know which other stocks you would want me to analyze. I'll be happy to present my analysis and I will see you soon.